having some time for yourself in the morning, some peace and quiet, time for reflection and just to work on yourself is really empowering. Hi, hey, hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julia, and for the past three weeks, I have been waking up every day at 5 a.m. Well, not every day, actually, because I wasn't doing the weekends, but weekdays, I've been getting up at 5 a.m. It's been claimed by many people that 5 a.m. is like the victory hour of the day. I've been reading the 5 a.m. club book, which I would recommend to read. It's not really the type of book I would usually go for because I like to read, you know, fiction books or factual self-help books. And this is sort of a, a blend of the two in the sense of it gives you like factual self-help recommendations, but in like a fictional story. But it really got me thinking of neuroscientifically, yeah, it's a good word. Should we be waking up at 5 a.m.? Is there a brain advantage to getting up at that hour in the morning. I am a morning person, so for me, getting up at 5 a.m. isn't too out of the ordinary. After I've done this routine consistently, because it's not just getting up at 5 a.m., it's a whole other routine after that, I'll be back with a video on what exactly I've been doing, how it's been going, and if it is changing my life and my brain. So let's get into the science of waking up at this really, really early time in the morning. The first thing I wanna point out here is that biologically, not everyone is inclined to get up early. Our bodies run on an almost 24 hour cycle called a circadian rhythm. And this rhythm is driven by light, your environment, and it's also driven by your genetics. During this almost 24 hour period, there are different phases of the cycle, like sleep, peak alert times, release of different hormones, but it all happens each and every day. And this is down to even the cellular level, so the cells in your body. And this actually won the Nobel Prize this work. That scientists found that there is a buildup of a certain protein during the day in the cell, which then depletes overnight. So it gives the cell a 24 hour rhythmic cycle as well. So we are really driven by this circadian rhythm. When there is a mismatch in our circadian rhythm with an external environment, it can be really detrimental to our health. You may have experienced this on a slightly less severe level, but when you get jet lag, so if you move from from one time zone to a very different time zone, you probably don't feel quite yourself for a few days until you adapt to the new external environment. So all of our bodies do run on this rhythm, but our preference for sleep can vary from individual to individual. And this is down to the genetic component of the circadian rhythm. There are proteins which are encoded by genes which drive this cycle. And these pieces of genetic sequence have been called clock genes. Now there are extreme examples of individuals who have mutations in certain clock genes, which really push their sleep schedule to an extreme difference to the norm. An example of this is a gene called CRY1 and what this protein does is it inhibits the activation of other proteins in this circadian rhythm cycle and in certain families there is a mutation in this gene which causes the protein to hang around in the cell longer than it should do and this delays the circadian rhythm because the next proteins in the cycle can't be activated. This mutation causes a condition called delayed sleep phase disorder and that is a form of insomnia and these individuals go to sleep extremely later than others. Aside from these very extreme examples where there is an obvious phenotype or an obvious symptom where you can see that the circadian rhythm is altered, there are also more subtle variations in the genome that can alter the circadian rhythm. In a recent study there was shown to be over 350 positions in the genome that if changed can alter your ability of being a morning person. So you can imagine that having different combinations of these different mutations would augment the natural time that you want to go to bed. So because there are many genetic influences over this cycle, this leads some people to be more inclined to get up early than others. And this is what we call a chronotype. So the time of day that you naturally will get up. These preferences for different sleep times are also maintained when you go to a new time zone. So like I was saying before, jet lag can be really, really horrible and it takes you a few days to catch up. But normally once you catch up in that new environment, you will have the same waking and sleeping preference as when you are home. So for me, even when I go on holiday, day I still get up really early so these preferences for when we get up in the morning and when we go to sleep at night can really be influenced by our genes. So with going back to waking up at 5 a.m a recent study showed that there is about one in 300 estimated people to have this really really early rise time which would be to naturally wake up between 
between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. So one in 300 is actually a pretty high number to have this quite severe early waking time. But that means that 299 of 300 people do not naturally want to wake up between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. So to sum up, getting up at 5 a.m. is definitely not for everyone because the influence our genes can have over our internal clock can have a much stronger influence than we think. The next thing that really stood out to me when I was reading some science on this is that getting a good night's sleep is much more important than getting up early. So if you are naturally inclined to go to sleep a bit later and then trying to drag yourself up at 5 a.m., this is not going to do your brain any good. I would recommend reading Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep because this book really highlights why getting a solid sleep every single night is so important for your health. Disrupted or insufficient sleep has been linked to so many health problems, including memory impairment, heart problems, and more recently with poor academic performance. So if you're setting your alarm at five but not going to bed until midnight, do not do it. You need that seven or eight hours sleep. So if you're wanting to get up at 5 a.m., you need to go to bed around nine or 10 o'clock at night. Something else which I think is really important and a lot of us don't do this is how important it is to get up when your alarm goes off. Whether that is at 5 a.m. or 10 a.m., getting up promptly is good for your brain. Every night you go through sleep cycles which last about 90 minutes each. And during these cycles, your brain shows different activity. So there is a phase of your sleep called rapid eye movement sleep where your brain is very, very active. This is when most of your dreaming happens. And then you go all the way through to a really deep sleep where your brain activity is really synchronous and slow. So when your alarm goes off in the morning and you press snooze, your brain can fall right back in to a fresh 90 minute cycle. This then makes it even harder to get up and can lead to major brain fog. Personally, I know when I'm not gonna get up on my alarm because the night before I always have a little internal chat with myself when I'm setting the alarm and I say, we'll see if we'll get up at five tomorrow. No, Julia, no, because you know if you're saying already, if you're negotiating before you've even gone to sleep, I'll see if I'll get up. You will snooze that alarm, you will not get up at that time. Getting up on your alarm is your first win of the day. It's your first action of self-discipline. And I know this may sound like such a small thing, but giving in to your brain, just saying five more minutes in bed, will set you up for listening to that voice all day, which is normally the voice that makes you want to procrastinate and talk negatively to yourself. So set your alarm for when you know you can get up. If you set your alarm for six every day, but always get up at seven, just set it for seven, because then what you'll do is you'll get up when your alarm goes off, because that is giving you your first win and act of self-discipline for the day. Something a lot of us think are people who get up at the extreme hours in the morning are springing out of bed and they feel alive and happy to be awake. All of us feel tired when we wake up. It is a natural thing and this is called sleep inertia. Sleep inertia can last for up to about half an hour and what is happening here is your body is awake but your brain is still in sort of a phase of sleep and this means the brain can't switch between two modes which it goes through during the day which is a task positive mode and a task negative mode. Task negative is when you're less likely to be engaged in a task and procrastinating whereas a task positive mode is when you are more focused. So when you wake up in the morning your brain is unable to flip between these two things as easily as it does later in the day. But if you give yourself about half an hour your brain will then wake up. So when you wake up at 5 a.m if your alarm goes off at that time and you have that voice in your head saying I'm so tired uh, just push through the first 20 minutes of that and you should hopefully then come to and feel a lot more alive. With getting up early I think a major benefit is that you are giving your brain time before you go to work to do something for yourself. The majority of us have a lot of our time committed to working for other people and this leaves us in a state where we don't have enough time for ourselves. especially if you work in a nine-to-five job like me. My PhD I see as a nine-to-five job. If I'm getting up at seven and have to leave the house before eight, I literally have enough time to shower, eat my breakfast and go. I don't really have any time to invest in myself and because you know a lot of us do the same thing day in day out at work, we aren't giving ourselves the chance to really learn and reflect on ourselves. Someone described this as going to the gym and doing the same workout every day is what we sort of do when we go to work but if you give yourself some time to do some learning or some exercise, just something to improve yourself, then each day you will get better at that thing and mentally stronger. I tried to find research on this but it can be really difficult because there aren't really long-term studies that 
analyze people getting up at 5 a.m. every day and having those few hours to do things for themselves. A lot of the evidence out there is anecdotal. So it's people saying, I did this for 30 days and I feel amazing, but that isn't scientific. So I couldn't really find anything on there. If you know any studies looking at that, please highlight them to me and then I will share with everyone. So scientifically, it's a bit harder to pin down if this is biologically an advantage to have those few hours for yourself in the morning before going into work. But I can see the benefit from a non-scientific point of view, but having some time for yourself in the morning, some peace and quiet, time for reflection, and just to work on yourself is really empowering. There have been a few studies out there that argue that people who get up earlier have some brain advantages. These include that people who go to sleep later are more likely to have negative thoughts. But in this study, negative thoughts was also associated with lack of sleep. So that's a bit harder to untie. A study's also shown that morning people are better at not procrastinating. And it's also been reported that early risers have been correlated with better mental health. All of the studies that I can find are comparisons. So they're just relationships. I would love to see some biological mechanisms, some biological underpinnings to this work to see really if getting up at 5 a.m., taking that time for yourself, biologically enhances your brain. I'm yet to see it, but I'd love to. So for me and my schedule, for me to get that time for myself, that real time where I can do some reflection and some exercise, 5 a.m. is about the time I have to get up. So if you are wanting to get up that little bit earlier in the morning, you have to start telling yourself that you are a morning person. You have to start telling yourself that you are before you actually have the evidence to do it, or you will never get the evidence to do it because you'll just keep saying, I'm not a morning person. So start to tell yourself this and set your alarm incrementally to an earlier time. So I'd start with setting it 15 minutes earlier for a week, then go to half an hour, and then until you get to the time when you want to wake up. Like I said before, genetics do play into this. So there are some people who will naturally not be inclined to get up early, but I think over time you really can train yourself to do it. If you still feel absolutely knackered or feel like you just can't get to sleep early enough to get those seven hours in, then maybe getting up at 5 a.m. is not the best thing for you to be doing because your brain definitely will not benefit from not having a good night's sleep. So from what I can gather, it's not really the time of day of getting up, but more so giving yourself the time in the morning before you have to work for someone else to do something for yourself. So that for a lot of us does mean getting up earlier, but 5 a.m. might be a bit extreme. You can maybe get up a half six, seven and still have that time. I really do find it hard to give the advice of get up at 5 a.m. and it will change your life because some people just aren't inclined to get up that early and it would mean sacrificing their sleep, which is more important. So I think getting up this early has to be done on a person by person basis. And if you feel like you could go to bed at half nine and get up for five, great, then you can do it. I do really recommend though, taking that time for yourself in the morning and not snoozing your alarm. Right, that's it from me for today. I will be back reporting on my morning routine, like I said, in the next few months and showing how I found it and has it improved my life? We shall see. If you have any questions, you can get me on my social media or you can write in the comments below and I will catch you next time. Time.